Okay, let's talk about whether a company should outsource a product, or another way to say that is should they make or buy a component? So the correct answer isn't quite as simple as you might expect because manufacturing unit costs contain both fixed and variable components. So in deciding whether to outsource, managers have to consider fixed and variable costs separately. And some of the questions that they need to consider are how to best use available resources. So how do our variable costs compare to the outsourcing cost? Are there any avoidable fixed costs if we outsource? And what could we do with the free capacity? Now, almost any business activity can be outsourced. For example, manufacturing, marketing, payroll. Companies often choose to retain only their core competencies which are the things that they're really good at doing and outsource just about everything else to companies that can do it better for them. So here's an example, and this particular company makes switches. So they're considering whether they should outsource them. They're currently making them, and here's a breakdown of the cost of their switches. 50,000 in direct materials, direct labor 75,000, variable manufacturing overhead 40,000, fixed manufacturing overhead 60, so total manufacturing costs are 225,000. If we take the 225 divided by the 25,000 switches they're producing, that gives us a total cost per unit of $9. Now they can go outside and another company will make them for them at $8 per switch. So if you think about it, well, it's costing us nine. We can buy them at eight. That's a good deal, right? We're gonna save $1 per unit. However, the problem is if we do buy the switches externally, then all the variable costs will be eliminated, but only 10% of the fixed costs. And our fixed costs were $60,000. That means we're going to retain $50,000 worth of fixed costs, even if we purchase the switches outside. So we will save $25,000 but we are still gonna incur 50,000. And if that's the case, and we do buy them rather than produce them, we're gonna lose an extra $25,000. So if that's the case, then we're gonna elect to continue to make the switches. Here's our um, incremental analysis. You can see what happens if we make them, our costs associated, and then what, we, what will happen if we buy, and then the difference between the two. Now, a bigger question here are perhaps, what if we can use that new capacity that we've just given up to make something else? So maybe we can generate additional income of $28,000 by making another product. So we'll let someone else make our switches. We're gonna make another product and now we can make an extra $28,000. If we make the switches, then we're gonna to have to forego this additional income. So that would be um, an example of opportunity cost. And now if we run the analysis, so um, if we make them, we have this $28,000 opportunity cost to consider. If we buy them, it's gonna cost 250,000. So we actually will be better off now to buy the switches and make the other products. We will make an additional $3,000. Here's a little sample problem we can go through. So it reads, Jayco makes smartphones. The variable cost of producing 98,000 screens for its phones are $22 per unit. The fixed costs are associated with making the screens at 464,000. Instead of making the screens, the company has the opportunity to buy them at $26 per unit. However, only 70% of the fixed costs will be eliminated. Prepare a differential analysis showing whether the company should make or buy the screens. Well, let's do a little quick analysis. So if we list out the variable cost associated with those, hmm, You'll see here that the variable cost then is 2,156,000. Fixed cost of 464, so the total cost to make them are $260,020. Now they could buy them at $26 per unit times 98,000. That gives us a price of 25, 2,548,000. 
but only 70% of the fixed costs will be eliminated, which means we will still be incurring 139,200. So if this is the case, and we buy rather than continue to make them, we will lose $67,200. So again, some of the questions uh, managers need to consider are the variable, how do the variable costs compare to the outsourcing costs? Are any fixed costs going to be avoidable? And then what will we do with the freed up manufacturing capacity? Now the um, decision rule for outsourcing is as follows. If the differential costs of making the product exceed the differential costs of outsourcing, then we should go ahead and do the outsourcing. If the differential costs of making the product are less than the differential costs of outsourcing, then we should not outsource. 